Hey hey folks, welcome back to Let's Give It A Go with me, Beanie81. Now, last episode we gave Long Live The Queen a try, and having not died yet, I decided to carry on with a part 2 of this game, because it's it's really fun. So, just to remind myself where we were, uh, we've been focusing on military, animal handling, and very little on weaponry. So, with her being... Uh, it looks like she's pressured, yeah, pressured at the moment. So, that looks like military is still um, one of her best skills right now for learning, uh, as in what she's best at learning. Uh, not necessarily what she should be learning, but <laughs> we'll go with it. I've got no clue what um, would be the best thing for her to learn, so we'll go with it. And we'll start off with a couple of military things. Um, you study the effects of strong hierarchy on military organisation and the ability of troops to respond to changing situations. Communication across an army can be difficult. Disrupted signals can lead to chaos. You study famous battles, disasters and the mistakes which created them and the turning points in larger conflicts and why they made a difference. You study the concept of defeat in detail and how an army can be destroyed by crushing small parts one at a time rather than attacking it all at once. And we've maxed out strategy now. Nothing more to learn about it. You study blockades, both setting them and breaking them. You study the effect of cannons against coastal installations such as enemy docks and seaside villages. Okay then. There are reports that a key thong has been sighted leaving the old forest. What's a key thong? A beast with the body of an enormous cat, a sharp beak and spikes on its back. Eek! Several disappearances in southern Calaris are already thought to be the work of this creature. What do we do? Should we send hunters? The traditional policy on stray beasts is to hope that they return to the forest and stay there. Hunters are no match for such creatures. You would only make it angry and waste more lives. So we just let it eat people? Everyone dies in the end. Plus one depressed there. <laughs> it's a bit of a depressing uh, moral there. But anyhow, also there is a letter for you. Talaris, the Duke of Sedna will be arriving next week for an official vi for an official visit. Uh, okay. So, what do we want to do? I want to get her weapons up, I think. Which makes me think that she needs to be angry. Uh, Wilful angry? Let's go with that. You sneak a peek at some of the luckless presents held in the dungeons. Petty thieves and troublemakers now suffering in the dark. They're obviously bad people, but seeing them so miserable still feels unfair. There must be a better way. Alright. Uh, we don't have an outfit for weaponry, do we? No, we do not. However, she is now learning weaponry better because she's angry, uh, which almost ma ma always makes it easier to swing things and hit things hard. Uh, but anyway, let's go with them. Uh, do do do. Uh, pole arms and we'll go with swords. You learn about a variety of long weapons, from the quarterstaff to the spear to the halberd and glaive. You practice slow swings to move your blade to precisely marked targets, building up your muscles and control. Won't be long before she's got that outfit. Uh, that'll make things a bit easier. Ah, your highness, what a pleasure it is to meet you in person at last. Your description did not do you justice. Giggle. I don't know how to deal with handsome older men paying me compliments. I was so pleased to hear that you accepted my humble offering. A jewel for a jewel, but you are the more precious. I hope this is only the beginning of a mutually beneficial relationship. A union between us would bring stability to both our peoples. He really does want to marry me? Uh... I think we'll politely decline. I need to lay him down gently. I'm not marrying you, I'm only 14. That may not have been gentle. I see, I regret the misunderstanding. Whew. Didn't, doesn't look like it uh, had too much affection though, fortunately. Well, uh, let's carry on being willful and angry. Skip past that, we've already read it. So, week 13, what we got? She's still... Oh no, now she's angry, but that's fine. No, she was angry yesterday as well, wasn't she? Sorry, it's throwing me off, it said affected by willfulness or something. Uh, when we were doing the... when we chose what we were doing. Either way, I'm going to go for weapons again. Archery and pole arms this time around. So, pole arms and archery. I'm going for a very military-esque queen here. <laughs> Hopefully not going to be starting fights where I don't need them. 
You practice walking while carrying a long weapon, getting the feel for its size and weight, and learning to manoeuvre without banging it into anything, unintentionally. You learn the basic stances, grips and positions for staff fighting, and how to block a blow without crushing your fingers. I feel like moving without banging your pole arm into things is uh, a bit beside the point. Well, I suppose if it's unintentionally, but... <laughs> being unable to hit it against things makes it a pretty useless weapon. You learn to cut, fletch and tie arrows. And I've unlocked a new outfit, which will make uh, weaponry a lot easier to learn. You're requested to stand in judgement. A woman has been convicted of murder, uh, of attempted murder and requests the mercy of the crown. Your Highness, the slattern dares to beg pardon when she admits that she tried to poison my sister under her own roof. Which sister? Corisande, the Duchess of Mead. Is she alright? She's unharmed. We caught the culprit in the kitchens before anyone could eat her foul spew. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? It's just as it is. Them devils killed me brother, and broke me mam's heart. Lie to her, they did. When she went to see why he'd not come back, said he'd gone for a soldier when he never would. He weren't the only one, neither. I waited ten years for my chance to get my own back. That's justice. You see, she's completely unrepentant. Hang her and be done with it. I don't know what this is all about. Either way, murder is a serious crime, but... I don't have the full story here, but I do seem to be going with a very um, warrior-like queen, so I'm going to go for the most violent option. As she is clearly guilty, her life is forfeit. She will be hanged in public as a deterrent to other criminals. Y'all not have me. All of a sudden, she breaks loose from her guards and rushes at you. In your court dress, you're unarmed. You grope for a weapon and find only a heavy golden ornament, which you hurl in her direction. Your missile flies wide of its mark. Before you have a chance to do anything, your personal guards step into action, cutting the woman down before she can endanger you. Her lifeless body lies bleeding on your carpet. Get that out of here! Put it on display so that everyone sees what happens to criminals. Well, that was very close to death there. Uh, let us visit the treasury. Angry and willful. It doesn't look like I managed to. Uh, get to the pendant still, that's, of course, uh, sorry, if you can't remember from last episode, the reason we go to the treasury is to try and get past the guards, which are um, guarding the treasury, and inside it is our mother's pendant, which will let us do magic -y things. Which, actually, I don't think I'm going to bother with anyhow this time around. I don't see any... I think I'm better off going for the more mundane style of things, by which I mean just carrying on with the military... Uh, warrior style of the, uh, queen. And we'll go with the tabard to make her weapon handling much better. Swords and archery. You drill with a partner, attacking and blocking in carefully timed patterns. You've practiced moving with a blade, sidestepping, charging, and lunging. You learn about different styles and sizes of bows long, short, and recurve. You learn about caring for your bow, how to store it between uses, string and unstring, and check for damage or wear. You also learn that you should never fire a bow without an arrow on the string. Hmm, didn't know that. As you were walking one day in the gardens, you hear a strange sound and look up to see an owl flying overhead. A single dry leaf flutters in its talons. An owl flying in the open in broad daylight? That's unusual. I wonder if something's attacked it. There's a woman here to see you. She wishes crown funding for a project. Thank you for seeing me, Your Royal Highness. I, I come to you on behalf of the people. I wish to build a hospital where any citizen infected with disease can be brought for treatment. Putting all the sick people together, wouldn't that make them die even faster? We are not interested. Uh, no ranks in medicine, so a bit of an ignorant qu queen there. But anyhow, what are we? What's our mood looking like? <laughs> We're pretty much full angry. Close to full willful. So if we can go yielding, cheerful and lonely just to get these a bit nearer the centre. Uh, yielding. Um. Hmm. Yielding, lonely, and cheerful. Uh, I don't think that's really what I want. Is it? I want. I want cheerful. Yes, yeah, sorry, that is exactly what I want. Social plan. Uh, we'll play the toys for the weekend. Okay. Carry on with weaponry, I think. Uh, getting a bit repetitive here, but I, th I just think it's better to focus on a few skills and get them high. So let's keep at it. 
pole arms and archery. You practice standard attacks and sweeps for long staff. You practice sparring with a partner using a staff. You strap on protective gear and practice gripping, drawing, and anchoring the bow before finally loosing a shot. You practice shooting at clearly marked targets across that field, across a flat field. You practice shooting at targets of different shapes and sizes in mixed terrain. Hmm. Remember that the festival of the good ladies approaching. There'll be public celebrations of the com commoners, <laughs> followed by a grand gala for the nobility. As queen, you would be expected to lead the procession and take part in the ceremonial planting, possibly giving a speech. However, since you're not yet crowned, it is not required and it may not be safe to expose you to the public. What do you mean, not safe? Outside the castle, you are less well protected. If anyone means you harm, think on it now. Decide later. There's a letter for you as well. It's from Bryony. I went to school with her, but she's a couple of years older than me. Her mother is the Duchess of Mead. She's complaining that mother still won't let her come home for the holidays. Apparently her uncle Caven has been acting strangely lately and shouting at shadows. She's bored and looking for an adventure. Well, I don't have any to suggest to her. Oh, same as last time, we will play with our toys. Uh, now... Again, same as last time, I think. Just getting these weapons up to 100 is our best bet here. Um, I don't see any reason not to. Ooh, wrong one. So, you practice special techniques with a staff, such as twirling it or using it to vault. You practice basic techniques with a long spear, controlling your thrusts to penetrate specific targets. You practice basic swings with a halberd, building up your arm strength while learning to control the movement. And you practice using your blade to disarm opponents or shove them backwards. You spar with a partner, trading blows while looking for the openings to tag each other. You begin to work for metal blade, getting the feel for its weight and edge as well as learning how to care for it. Okay then. Today is the procession and planting for the Festival of the Good Lady. Will you be leading the parade? If you have any concerns about your safety, please stay here. People will recover from disappointment if we lose you. There is no recovery. Um... You see, so far I'm not really... I'm definitely not making a speech. She's not got the charisma to make a speech. I think... If she leads the parade... I'm not sure she's really got any skills that will be able to be shown off here. And it may just be putting her in unnecessary danger. Uh, screw it, we'll do that anyhow. I'm not afraid. I'm going to be the best parade leader ever. My little girl. Prepare your best gown for the occasion, then walk slowly through the town with your attendants. It would not be appropriate for you to wear a sword, but you do walk with a sturdy golden scepter that's taller than you are. At the end of the route, you help the priestesses turn over the earth for the new tree to be planted. Then the new li life is blessed and all the attendants join in song. A procession regroups to return to the castle. Doesn't look like I've got any enemies. Um, or at least none that decide to attack me there. Are you still going for... Um, let's go with... Yeah, lonely and yielding. We still need to knock them up, so... We'll spend more time with our toys. <laughs> Spending a lot of time in our room right now. Okay, swords and archery, I think. Knock them up to 100. Let's go... Swords and Archery. Or Archery and Swords, technically. You practice long-distance shooting, setting arrows into the ground at different ranges. You practice shooting at moving targets. You practice shooting targets while you're, you yourself are moving, pulled along in a chariot. Nothing well to learn about Archery. You practice drawing your blade and striking at short notice from a variety of positions. You learn techniques for thrusting your blade through armour to disable or kill your opponents. You learn advanced techniques for holding off multiple opponents at once. Okay then. She's turned into a bit of a badass, gotta say. You ready for the grand ball? All the nobles in domain are here to see you, to see their queen. Gulp. You finish dressing and descend the stairs to make a grand entrance. All around the rich and powerful pause in their activities to gaze upon you, the rule of them all. Seeing yourself reflected in so many eyes makes you want to run away and hide. After a moment, you force yourself to carry on, but you're sure you've seen you're sure they've all seen you hesitate. Your father waits for you at the bottom of the stairs and you offer and offers you his arm. The first dance is for us. He guides you gently around the dance floor, never rushing you. It's fun to dance with your father, but the look in his eyes is so sad. After this, you must choose your own partner. There are a number of men who hope to catch your eye. The Duke of Kigal alone has brought three eligible sons, all near your age. You look around the room at all your possible partners, which is to say everyone. No one may begin dancing until you do. You can pick whomever you want and you will not be denied. Well, let's go with 
someone already mar married, someone scandalous, someone younger than me, someone older than me, someone about my age. Let's go with someone about my age. You approach Linley, the second son of the Duke of Gigal. He's about two years older than you and he was always nice to you at school. He bows to you with great courtesy and you begin to dance. Dancing with a real partner feels quite different from dancing with your father. You knew him, you knew his steps like a part of you, now every move is a mystery. Unfortunately, you lose track of which steps you're supposed to do when, and trip over your own feet. Oops. Between the dances, there is time for the guests to mingle, chat, and sample tiny bits of exquisite food. During a lull in the music, Banyan, the Duke of Marie, taps an elegant fingernail against a wine glass, letting the clear note ring out through the room. If I might have your attention, I believe we should offer our compliments to our lovely hostess. Her bravery and courage keep our borders defended. Everyone applauds politely. As the gala continues, you take the opportunity to observe nobles that you rarely see. There's Gwynell, for instance, the young lady of Sudbury, only months older than you, and due to finally inherit control of her duchy soon. Or Adele, the youngest daughter of the Duchess of Leela, and a fierce sportswoman. She was a few years ahead of you at school, and the absolute terror of the ball fields. No, Bryony. She had said her parents were leaving her stuck at school this season. Her parents are here, dancing together, the Duke Consort clutching his Duchess possessively tight. Strange that there's no sign of your cousins, though. Shouldn't they be here? Your aunt and uncle are here, of course. It'd be scandalous if they hadn't come, Merva being so close by. It's nice to be able to enjoy time with friends and family, isn't it? Okay, and I missed so many things there. Um, but then again, with all my skills kind of based around um, the military style, I'm not surprised she didn't do very well in the ballroom setting. Uh, what we got? Hmm. I feel like I should move her towards... I'm not sure what I want to learn next. I think going for one of her... I think cheerful and afraid and putting her, getting some charisma skills would really help. So... Cheerful. Uh, angry, afraid, and depressed. It looks like... Uh, Let's just go for these. Bit more playing the toys. She's angry still. What else is she good at being angry? Or I could just get pole arms and logistics both to 100. I think that makes sense. Max them out. Pole arms and logistics. You learn to calculate how effective military strategy wanes over a distance from a home position as it becomes more difficult to put pieces into play. You learn how to delay the advance of an invading force by disrupting their transport and communications. And you practice sparring with a wooden halberd versus a wooden sword, learning the dangers of overextending or allowing your opponent in too close. You practice with unusual weapons such as the spiked staff, the sword staff and the volge. You wander downstairs to visit your father and talk about the latest events in the domain. You're moving with such enthusiasm you don't realise your father isn't alone until it's too late to avoid him and his companion. You're too kind, Jocelyn. Countess Seren, not a member of your circles. She's a bit more than a decade your senior, far too old to have, been, uh, to have ever been your friend, and yet not at all old as noble Mingo. She has two minor titles, no husband and your father's arm in, in her grasp. How dare she make a move on your father? Let's trip her as she passes. That's the right thing to do, right? You wait until the Countess gets closer, then hook your foot around to make her stumble. Unfortunately, you get your feet tangled up and end up tripping yourself, falling to the ground with a thud. Eldie, are you alright? Oh dear, she does need a bit of looking after, doesn't she? Not by you! I should go now. I hope to see more of you later. Once she's gone, you raise an eyebrow at your father. Don't give me that look, young lady. She's a nice woman. Nothing more. She wants something more. And it's not going to happen anytime soon. You should be careful how you deal with people like Siren. You need the goodwill of your nobles as well as your commoners. There haven't been any problems so far. As queen, you must be aware of everything around you. I'm paying attention to what's around me. No, she's not. Uh, let's visit... Ju uh, that's just going to get me the crystal. I think it's a waste of time in honesty. I'm not... Uh, I could go with a bit of magic. Right, we're running out of other stuff to do, aren't we? Yeah, let's go with magic. You've not yet reached the crystal. Are you making progress or it's, is it time for another plan? That would probably be the drastic action she mentioned earlier. Let's take some drastic action. I suppose I'll have to listen to another plan. Leave it to me. Fine. 
That night, an explosion rocks the castle. A section of stone near the royal treasury collapses, crushing the guards on duty. Nothing is stolen, at least nothing that is acknowledged publicly. But when you look at your father's face, you can see it in his eyes. The crystal is gone, and he knows that you are to blame. He will never trust you the same way again. That's fine, it's our crystal anyhow. Okay, so we are going to be going with Lumen next. And I believe willpower is what, or will, is what we want for that. Um, no, is it will, uh, willful? That's the one. So we'll knock willful up um, at the next opportunity. For now, we're just going to have to... Oh no, we still can't do it though. So, let's instead... Um, it looks like being angry gives us a penalty on animal handling, unfortunately. Could knock naval strategy up to the 100. Feels such a waste to, do, to spend a week working on, or half a week, working on something that only needs 2%. But, uh... Um... Let's go with... Oh, I really don't know. Naval strategy and law. Why not? Faith, law, military, naval strategy. And then we've maxed out. That would be the sixth skill we've maxed. You study the difficulty of a sneak attack at sea and ways it can be achieved. Nothing more to learn about it. Only a lumen can channel magic, and only with the help of an entuned crystal. The ability to control a crystal seems to be inherited, so crystals can be passed from parent to child upon the lumen's death. Okay. It's the time of year to decide any necessary adjustments to the royal budget. The majority of the money we receive is already spoken for, but there is always some room for discretion. I really don't understand all these numbers. Let's raise the taxes. That can't go wrong, can it? We need more money. Raise the taxes! As you wish. Let's visit Juliana. Do you have it? You do have it, don't you? The crystal? Of course. Everything is ready for you. Right. Did you really have to kill the guards? If you regret their sacrifice, then do not let it go to waste. It's too late to turn back now. I have to do the best I can for my people. What do I do? Pick up the crystal with your bare hands, press it against your chest, over your heart, and say illuminate. Okay, here we go. Illuminate! And there we go. Hmm. Very animu. Anyhow. You feel dizzy and both larger and lighter than you were before. The crystal has disappeared from view, but you know where it is. Wow. The priestess here is a friend of mine. I'll come to your lessons in the faith and train you to use your powers. I should feel happy, I guess. I'm illumined now, I just hope I'm doing the right thing. Well, uh, let's see what her mood... Oh, she's still not very willful. I don't, I don't think she changed at all, actually, really, there, did she? Um, none of her outfits are going to really help with Illuminate right now, so... Let's go Resist and Sense to start off with. You increase your awareness of your own thoughts and emotions, making it more difficult for mind-affecting magic to twist your reactions. You close your eyes and learn to feel the magic inside you. You are requested to stand in judgement. A man has con been convicted of the murder by strangling of his wife. He does not deny the act, but requests a pardon that he might be set free. If you admit you killed your wife, why do you think I'm going to set you free? Save me, your majesty. Wasn't my fault. Demons made me do it. Everyone knows the power of magical beasties. They used me. They twisted my fingers into chains. My wife found me screaming. She tried to shake me and the chains wrapped around her. I need the priestess to bless me and make me clean again. Demons that make you attack people. Is that even possible? <sighs> he killed somebody. Let's execute him. I don't care whether they were demons or not. You're still a murderer and your life is forfeit. You'll be hanged in public as a deterrent of future criminals. He opens his mouth to argue with fervor, but then his shoulders slump. Yes, your majesty. Ah. Uh, out of game, I feel really bad, but, you know. Playing the angry little warrior queen, so. <sniffs> it's called. It's role playing, guys, that's uh, totally right. Ah, here we go. Plus two willful, plus one lonely. Sneak out of the castle to have a little fun. You enjoy your freedom, but your father won't like it if he finds out. What do we got? She's still angry. And it's week 21 now. Let's go for more lumen. Classes, wield magic, and sense magic. You learn to summon a small glowing light, which you can then move around independently. 
You practice using small amounts of magic and feeling the power that outside of yourself. You receive word of an unfortunate incident at the gallows, where the man you judged was sent to be executed. As he was led to the platform, he suddenly lashed out of explosive magical power, killing several guards and spectators before making his escape. The population is buzzing with rumours of a secret cabal of evil lumens who sacrifice innocents in their dark rituals. Well, that escalated quickly. Is she still angry? Yes, she is. <sighs> Soon. I'm sure she'll soon reach the uh, point of willful. You learn how to cast rays of white light which can banish shadows and blind your opponents. You learn to consciously project a magical field through your thoughts, blocking out magic, uh, blocking outside magic from touching your mind, but only when you have the energy to consciously resist. I regret to inform you that Fabian, the Earl of Titan and Duke Regent of Alath, has passed away. This isn't really a surprise, he was pretty old. The problem is the political implications. With the control of Alath in doubt, it forced the crown to make decisions. Young Lord Odair will not reach his 15th birthday for over two years. He requires a regent. His stepmother, Arise, of, Arise the Duchess of Lila, has petitioned that the boy be left in her care. This would, however, leave her in personal control of two neighbouring duchies, which is generally forbidden. Almost the entire eastern border. I don't know anything really bad about her, though. The boy does have a living grandfather, the Earl of Ishtar. Or you might appoint an unrelated noble to act in his stead. The Earl of Ishtar has suggested another possibility. You and Adair are both young, not too far apart in their age. He requests that we accept the boy as your future husband and keep him here at the castle. Uh, um, let's... Don't leave him with his mother. She's already got one. Uh, she's already um, Duchess of one area. I don't want to make her Duchess of two areas. That's just greedy. So, let's send him to your uncle. What about your brother, Armand? He'll be safe with a pair of hands to watch over there, as you wish. Right, and sneak out again. Right, we're reaching the end of the episode here, folks, and rather, I seem to have uh, lost track. I shouldn't have really done this a two-part, I just uh, I thought I was going to die a lot earlier than I seem to have. I'm uh, managing to survive a lot longer than I thought I would. So, that said, I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, I might carry this uh, this on in the future. I'm going to keep it saved, so I might come back to it. But for now, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, yes, catch you later, folks. Uh, tune in next time, and I'm, you know what? I'm not sure what game I'm pl I plan on be, uh, playing, but I'll see you then. Catch you later, folks.